Hi everyone and welcome to another review here on Theme Park Worldwide. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on one of my personal favourites ever roller coasters. It is of course Shambhala, a hyper coaster located at Port Aventura World in Spain. Now Shambhala was manufactured by Bolliger and Mabillard and opened at the park in 2012 and it opened on a very special day for me and I went out there specially for it. It was my birthday, May the 12th, 2012. 2012. So uh, another special reason for me why this ride means so much to me. It opened on my birthday. It's one of the best trips ever going out there to ride it. Such a big ride at a park that I've always loved uh, and going to experience it was certainly fantastic. And when it opened in 2012, it was actually the tallest and fastest roller coaster anywhere in Europe. Unfortunately, it's lost that in titles now um, to other rides, but um, it's still up there as one of my favorite ever coasters. It's firmly in my top 10 coasters. If you haven't already seen my updated list for that, um, check out the video that was uploaded a few weeks ago here on Theme Park Worldwide. But uh, Shambhala has always been one of my favourites. It was my top coaster for many years. And in this video, I'm going to go into detail about just why I rate this ride so highly. Bear in mind, there's a lot of other B&M hyper coasters out there, and I've ridden so many of them. But Shambhala, for me, is just the perfect theme, the perfect location, and a fantastic layout for a ride as well. So... As always with these reviews, let's talk about um, the location of this ride within Port Aventura. Now, of course, there's two parks. There's Port Aventura Park and also Ferrari Land. This is in the original park, um, of course, Port Aventura Park, and it's located right at the back in the China-themed area. However, as much as it's located in that area, when this ride opened, it created such a visual impact around the rest of the park. You walk straight in to Port Aventura through the Mediterranean-themed area, and you can see it right over there at the back and it was designed beautifully this ride to look great from all the different existing areas at the park but especially at the entrance there's nothing like walking into Port Aventura seeing that lagoon in front of you and then looking over in the distance and just seeing Shambhala of course replicating the Himalayan mountains um, with its uh, camelbacks across the back it's certainly stunning to look at um, but once you get up there um, right into the Chinese themed area of the park um, it's not directly the first ride you come to either um, you have to walk past um, various other attractions Dragon Khan another B&M coaster and Dragon Khan always used to look huge at Port Aventura you'll know that if you went there before Shambhala but when that opened in 2012 it just towers right above it Khan always looked huge but it looks um, you know a lot smaller now compared to Shambhala but still a very impressive ride and a Dragon Khan review will be coming up at some point in the future um, in this series once you've made your way um, up towards Shambhala of course there's two ways to get into it you can come past um, the entrance to Dragon Khan through this way from the Mexican themed area or you can walk um, through the Polynesian themed area of the park and also up um, through China that way or through Sesamo Ventura and up to the ride that way so there's a few different um, pathways um, that lead to it two main ones and also a, another one that was added in as, a, as an access route to Shambhala and when you get into this area it's absolutely stunning it's all based on the town of Shambhala this sort of place where you can't go but it's like this sacred happy place um, which you know is a fantastic theme for this um, it's got lots of different elevation in the area places to kind of um, sit and watch this ride bear in mind it's got a fantastic water splash it's got some great theming like there's a giant buddha statue and um, there's all snow uh, fake of course we are in spain um, all on the different rooftops and also along uh, the pathways at the side as well which is fantastic and you've got this humongous shambhala entrance sign which is brilliant as well and for me like i say when i review these rides it's not all about the coaster it's the location it's the views it's the theme and Shambhala for the theme is absolutely fantastic the entrance is stunning um, and here you go once you're in the area of course you join the queue line which unfortunately isn't quite as stunning um, as the rest of the area and that's the the downfall of rides at Port Aventura unfortunately uh, the queue line is horrible it looks all right from outside it's a well-themed building and everything but inside it's literally a cattle pen queue that probably goes up and down maybe 30 times it is horrible bear in mind on a hot sweaty day that queue line is not great at all. Yes, you're in the shade, but oh, blimey, it is terrible. Uh, and everybody's just clustered together. Obviously, not so much at the moment with everything going on when this is being filmed, but 
everybody clusters together. It's probably a more pleasant experience doing the social distancing in the queue for Shambhala at the moment. Um, and then of course you've got the station building itself, which again is very nicely themed. Um, it's got lots of different colours on there, lots of reds, greens, um, all comes together in a really nice station building, which I do like. It's an open station, so it's a lovely place just to cool off. Unfortunately, you're not in there for very long, um, unless the ride breaks down, which let's be honest, it isn't very uh, often that that happens with a, with a B&M coaster. Um, you know, and it's a pretty reliable ride but in the station nice open station um, it's got some good theming around I do wish the station had more theming it used to have some wonderful lanterns hanging up but uh, the wind was actually blowing them that much that they took them down in the end and they've replaced them with some different lighting which isn't the same um, but yeah it's still a, a pr pr quite a pretty station from outside but could do with a few more details inside and then of course you were greeted with the train in front of you now Shambhala does have three trains it tends to only run two a lot of the time now but on some peak days it still is known to run three um, Port Ventura's operations certainly aren't the best but this coaster really is fantastic now let's talk about the train design because this is a very different train design to a lot of other hyper coasters out there um, which I do really like so 32 riders can be seated on a Shambhala train on the newer style hyper coaster trains now of course a lot of hyper coasters standard like Silver Star for example um, at Europa Park where you've got four seats in a row clamshell restraints and there you go you're happy great trains but what I really like with Shambhala's is how different they are you've kind of got two seats in the middle um, that are uh, next to each other and then you've got two which are on the side kind of like a wing but it's not a wing because you're still actually on a, an actual base for the train so yeah it's really interesting I always kind of sail out on the wing but um, it's not a wing coaster you know it's not a, a, a proper wing but um, it kind of feels like it no matter what row you're on you really feel exposed um, on this ride which is fantastic because you've never got somebody next to you on one side even if you're sat on the two seats in the middle you can kind of look out to the side uh, whether you're on either, either side of course and get a view and it's not blocked by people and I think that's what really helps with the train design on Shambhala and then we talk about the fact there's no sides the floor of the train is level with the station so there's no sides you can put your hand out and the next thing is the ground down below you um, and along with that as well the fantastic B&M clamshell restraints that I absolutely love so these pull down, no seat belts or anything required on Shambhala. Um, clamshell comes down and sits comfortably. Um, really nice just on the top of your legs. Very comfortable restraint. Um, a lot of the time, they don't push down on them too much. So you have quite a lot of breathing room and airtime room on the ride, of, of course, which is uh, the priority um, on Shambhala. You want to make sure you've got plenty of room for airtime. But of course, uh, the staff will make sure that it is pushed down enough and safe that you're not going to go flying out um, at 250 feet. But here we go. So once it's time for your dispatch you then make your way out of the station turn around to the right 90 degree turn and start to climb up the 76 meter tall lift hill that's 249 feet and climbing up this you get some absolutely incredible views looking over the park you can see down to the nearby um, beach and, and the town of Salou which is brilliant views um, honestly the, the views from Shambhala are stunning and again that's one of the reasons why I rate this so highly not that many hyper coasters where you can look out and see the sea over in the distance and on a daytime sunshine ride it's absolutely gorgeous especially on the front row and the back row um, I do prefer a back uh, seat on Shambhala either side's good on the back but I quite like a back left on Shambhala um, it's one of my favourites uh, but climbing up this lift hill the views are absolutely incredible you look down on Dragon Khan and you get some great interaction sometimes I mean they don't plan it like this but um, sometimes you'll have the lift hill coming up um, for Dragon Khan so the train's coming up there Shambhala over it and you can wave at the riders and, and that interaction Interaction for both rides um, is absolutely fantastic. Still can't believe they built a B&M on, on top of a B&M, but um, it looks great in my opinion. I think it really enhanced the, the overall look of the area. Once you get up to the top of this, if you're on the front row, you really get quite a bit of hang time on the going over the top of that drop, and you're looking down thinking, blimey, we're going straight down that. On the back row, however, you don't have as much time to enjoy the view as it whips you straight over the back before heading down the drop. Now, it's a 77.4 degree first drop on Shambhala, um, and it's actually 78 meters, uh, the drop, 256 feet, a couple of meters taller uh, than the actual lift hill, and that's because the drop is dug down into a tunnel at the bottom. When you go down this drop, you're straight into this tunnel, which is an amazing near-miss element. I've stood on the pathway in the area next to that tunnel, and you see people 
with the hands up and you know it's not far away yeah yes it's a perfect distance but it's a real good head chopper coming from that height straight into a tunnel normally a hyper you wouldn't have a tunnel first it would come later on one of the camelbacks but with shambhala no messing about straight into that tunnel which i really like and the drop itself is incredible as well like i say 77.4 degree drop nice and steep it doesn't sort of curve out too early either and the fact it goes into that tunnel it's one of the best first drops ever on a coaster in my opinion when you come out of that you start to bank to the left a little bit still at ground level um, or just below ground level in the tunnel itself and before climbing um, up into the first of five camelbacks which is of course the, this the tallest camelback on the ride and again you get some great airtime on this um, you get whipped out especially on the back you're coming down out of this camelback um, and you are whipped straight out no matter which row you're on but definitely on the back row of course with Shambhala how these camels uh, humps are designed is that when you actually go up into them you get airtime on the front when you crest up into it and on the back you get it more when you're coming out of the camel back as well so uh, there we go lots of talking about camels in this one um, but I'll tell you what it's definitely worth it <laughs> following on from that you then drop down and make your way into the turnaround section now instead of it being a normal turnaround it's like a figure of eight style helix what you go up into also known as an ampersand element um, and this is fantastic like the forces on this are really good and when it opened in 2012 it was still forceful but I kind of feel like this element has aged even better um, there's parts of that where it's intense like especially if you're sat on the back right um, going around that ampersand is pretty intense again the views are fantastic looking down looking across the park seeing the beach and the sea in the distance all building up to this absolutely incredible experience uh, and then you come straight out of that and not up, straight up into another huge camelback before that you actually go over a speed hill a nice ejector hill which is fantastic now it does have a trim brake on there however you cannot feel it i believe that it doesn't activate most of the time unless the ride if it clocks it going faster than it should do um, because of maybe the wind or other elements to do with the seasons then yeah it might kick in but on a general normal day you do not feel that trim kick in so i don't think that's in action most of the time but it is there just in case it does over speed but you go over this speed hill and blimey you get whacked out of your seats the most airtime at any point of the ride there um, on that it's absolutely fantastic going over that um, and you get some great views there as well off to the side now of course you see angle the splash battle that wasn't there in 2012 but um, you go past that and you get some really nice views uh, just in general of the uh, of the area around there but following on from that you then make your way up into the second um, of the camelbacks on this ride um, which again is fantastic you get some really nice airtime um, on there you get a bit of interaction with dragon khan's first drop um, on there as well before you drop down into the splashdown element but what's quite different about the splashdown on Shambhala is it's not a real splashdown like Shikra for example the dive coaster um, over at Bush Gardens in Tampa Florida and um, with that um, it's actually got um, a piece of metal attached onto the train and then as it goes down into it it causes the water to splash up with Shambhala it's all fake the train doesn't touch water at one point um, it's actually fountains at the side what create the effect which looks great I do really like that it means it doesn't affect the speed of the train whereas on sheet crow and other coasters that have got that um splash down element it does actually slow the train down it acts as a break but on shambhala of course they didn't want to do that um so they put in a fake water splash but i still think it looks great maybe not quite as effective as a, a real water splash but i do like what they did with that viewing area and the overall part of it and um, there's like a little restaurant looking over there lots of seating lots of big theming around there as well and a nice trickling waterfall uh, that all adds to it Following on from that, you're up into two more camelbacks, um, kind of over the entrance and queue line area now, um, where you're going over. Uh, this provides a brilliant off-ride perspective, looking at the Shambhala signage at the entrance and then the camelback going over. And they're both really good. On the front, it's more a bit of floater airtime. On the back, it's full on ejector going over those, um, it's, which is fantastic. Um, before you just turn to bank round to the left a little bit before hitting the mid-course brake run. Um, I say mid-course, it's right near the end of the layout. There's not much left after that but um, it hits that still with some speed it doesn't slow it down too much before dropping down um, to the left 
um, after that moment. Um, kind of banked downwards to the left before you actually get a little bit of a final hill uh, and then into the brake run. This ride is action packed all the way to the end. You actually get air time um, on the front row, especially just going up into the brake run. You do a bit on the back, but it's kind of hit the brakes by then. On the front row, when you whip up into the brake run, you get air time because Shambhala's brake run isn't just straight at first. It starts on a bit of an angle. Um, so you get air time kind of on that, a bit of a bonus, which is absolutely fantastic. Of course, you then hit the brakes and make your way down um, back to the off load um, in the station but what an overall ride experience just talking about it gets me excited i would do anything right now for a ride on shambhala but unfortunately we can't but fingers crossed soon if you're watching this at some point in the future let's hope the world's a better place and we're all traveling again and then making the most of life and enjoying theme parks but um, i tell you what uh, shambhala is the complete package so i hope that this sit down review has made you realize my reasons for loving shambhala so much compared to other hyper coasters it's things like the train design it's the tunnel at the bottom of the first drop it's the views of the ocean um, and the beach out there in the distance and it's the theme i love the theme of shambhala this mysterious place and the fact that the track actually acts as the himalayan mountains that was the plan you know they wanted these mountains at the back of the park um, and, and used the coaster um, with that which was fantastic what a great design and the color scheme of it with the white track and um, the black supports and of course you've got like the uh, turquoise color on the track as well um, but yeah, it all just comes together in an amazing package. I love the mini area. The only things that have changed with Shambhala would be the cattle pen queue line and the station. Um, other than that, I think the ride is pretty much perfect and uh, I really very much enjoy it. But have you been on Shambhala? Let me know down below in the video comments. It's a ride that I absolutely adore. Um, 2012 on my birthday was a special day. I'll always remember it going out there and riding Shambhala. And uh, I've had hundreds and hundreds of rides on it since, probably close to a thousand. I'd say now I mean the years after it opened I went a few times a year to just ride Shambhala or Shammy B as uh, she's been known over the years to me I love it I really do but uh, there we go drop us a comment down below for Shammy B really want to know uh, your thoughts and your reviews on it maybe you want to go and ride it at some point maybe hate to say it but maybe you think it's overrated I would love to know your thoughts it's always nice to hear people's opinions uh, on rides and how they differ and nobody always likes the same thing it's nice to you know know that people have got different opinions and stuff I always really like that and it's really important to respect people's opinions too so there we go thanks for joining me for another review here on theme park worldwide from shambhala expedition to the himalayas at Puerto Ventura world in spain brand new videos every single day here on the channel for you to enjoy and uh, yes i'll see you all again soon in the next video here on the channel that leaves me with one final thing to say get out there keep on riding see you soon shammy b